Uh, praise God, everyone. Uh, we want to thank God for yet another opportunity that He has given us to come to you to share the word of His grace. And before we begin, kindly let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for your grace and mercy. We want to thank you for the wonderful opportunity that you always give us to share the words of life. And Lord, as we speak, these things may they come in simplicity, may they be received in the name of Jesus, may they fall on fertile grounds, may these things break us, may these things bend us, may these things cause us to be blessed, to the place where you've called us to function and be. The Bible says that you have, all, you have made of all men one blood for to dwell on the face of the earth, uh, and you've determined their times before appointed and their bounds of habitation. Lord, that the times that you have appointed for us to function and be effective will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. But most importantly, that the bounds of habitations will not be frustrated. We shall operate. We shall operate in the places that you have appointed us to operate. In the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you for everyone. Um, invite someone to watch this video. Share the links. Uh, host a watch party. Uh, call someone um, to watch with you people have smart TVs these days, call someone to watch with you, uh, share your phone with someone to watch uh, the, 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 the word of God. If we, if you know for what videos, how much more the word of God, uh, which is indeed alive, it is quick and sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword, pierce given to the dividing son of the soul, the bone and the marrow, it exposes our hearts for who they truly are. Wow, what a wonderful opportunity. This is family. Thank you for everyone who does everything possible to make sure that uh, we still preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we owe our allegiance to Jesus who enables us. The Bible says that our sufficiencies of God who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament. Every other day, God gives us the sufficiency, God gives us the grace. Uh, to function and preach the gospel in and out of season, whether quarantine is there or not, we preach the gospel, whether lockdown or not, lockdown, we preach the gospel in and out of season. At any time, the word of God will have relevance in the lives of human, of, of human beings. And it has more relevance today than it had yesterday. It will have more relevance tomorrow than it had the day before. The word of God is true. Praise God. Uh, there's been a meditation in my heart for a couple of days, and I believe that Saturday, I, in the first parts of the sermon, I tried to nip uh, about it, uh, something to do with understanding, or something to do with understanding. The Bible says that uh, by wisdom a house is built with understanding, it is established, and knowledge filleth it with all good things. That means the thing that makes you who you are is wisdom. Wisdom builds you. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 that a cherished heart she will exalt you, she will honor you. Wisdom honors a man. Wisdom will place, will place you in places of honor. But the thing that establishes you is what we call understanding. There are many people who are wise but they are not established. There are many people who even give wisdom to other people but they themselves they are not established the bible says that wisdom rest, uh, rests in the heart of him that has understanding so that means wisdom must find a place of a man that has a heart of understanding or oh, an understanding heart praise the lord and today i want to talk to you about an understanding heart or having a heart of understanding, or an understanding heart, whichever you want to call it, but I want to talk to you about understanding. Praise the Lord. Because I, I, I realize that many times, like the scripture says in James, that if you don't ask, if you do not have wisdom, ask God who gives liberally. So many times we seek for wisdom, but we do not have a heart of understanding where that wisdom can rest. And because wisdom cannot rest, we, we we are indifferent, we carry an indifference to so many things that the wisdom of God operating on our lives is not equivalent to the kind of establishment that we carry and have. This establishment is the kind of establishment that everyone needs in the realm of the spirit. 
if the Bible says that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation, indeed in this time than no other time do we need wisdom. And for you, a New Testament believer, understand that you have the wisdom of Christ. The Bible says that Christ has been made unto us our wisdom, our redemption and sanctification. So if you are born again, you're not like a new uh, Old Testament person. You have wisdom. The wisdom of God is operating in your life. You have the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you need understanding because it is in understanding. It is a place of understanding where that wisdom will rest. Proverbs 20 verses 5, the Bible says, Counsel in the heart of a man is as deep waters, but a man of understanding draws that wisdom out. Draws that counsel out. Meaning, the Bible says, Counsel in the heart of a man is as deep waters. But a man of understanding can draw out that counsel. Praise the Lord. Counsel is, is, is the voice of God that, that instructs us, that speaks to us in circumstances when we are confused. Indeed, like the Bible says that you shall be moving and a voice shall come behind you saying, this is the way, follow it. That is the voice of counsel. When this voice dies out on an individual, they can easily perish. So the Bible says that counsel in the heart of a man is as deep waters, but a man of understanding draws that counsel out. Meaning that you can only draw out counsel as much as, 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 as to the level of understanding that is established in your spirit. If you do not have understanding, you cannot draw out certain places. It is understanding that gives anybody stability in the realm of the spirit. Why? Because there is a place of understanding inside you. Hallelujah. There is a place of understanding inside you. Uh, let's, let's read 1 Kings chapter 3 verses. Uh, 1 Kings from chapter 3. The life of a man called Solomon. A young king whose father was David. First Kings chapter 3 from verses, I think, 8. Um, let's begin from verses 5. The Bible says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, What shall I give thee? And Solomon said, Thou art showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. There is a lot there. Verses 8 says, And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Verses 9 says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to do what? To judge your people that I may discern between God and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, praise God, Neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thy enemies. But you have asked for yourself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was no, so that there was none, like thee before thee, 
Praise God. Neither after thee shall any arise unto thee. Praise God. Hallelujah. We read of an experience that happens in the life of Solomon. A young man, and indeed, like we've been told, prevenient grace works on him. The grace of God, prevenient grace is the grace of God that goes ahead of you to cause you to respond and do things that you should do and God preordains the way you're supposed to respond. So God causes Solomon to fall asleep. Maybe if Solomon was, if God encountered Solomon when he was not asleep, he would have asked for another thing. Maybe he would have asked for women. He married many women. He had seven, 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 three hundred wives and three and seven hundred concubines. Praise God. So God appears to him when he is asleep. And God asks him, what should I give you? And Solomon says, give me an understanding heart. Because when I have an understanding heart, wisdom will easily rest in that heart. Wisdom will simply find its place. Because what gives wisdom rest is when it finds a heart of understanding. Wisdom is restless when, when, when it falls on a man who doesn't have a certain place of understanding in their spirits. So Solomon asked for an understanding heart. Of course, I've heard people say he asked for wisdom. Well, the scripture says he asked for an understanding heart. When God answers his prayer, he says, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. What does that mean? That means that God will always give you more than you ask. No wonder the Bible says before you ask, he knows what you're going to pray for. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But in that conversation that happens between God and Solomon when he's asleep, there are quite a number of things that I want us to pick today in, 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 in this teaching and learn. And one of it is verses 11 and God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and you've not asked for yourself long life. Meaning, many people, this represents many people who go to God to pray. And what do they ask for? Look at these three things. Long life, riches, and their enemies. Why do many Christians want to be blessed? Yet they are already blessed. <laughs> Praise God. God has already blessed them. But they want a certain elevation in the, in, in the material world. Many of them, when you discern the, 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 the thoughts and intents of their hearts, it is that God give me a castle that my enemies might also know that you came out for me. God give me a very big house that my enemies can know that, hey, by the way, I also know. God give me a big, powerful wedding so that other people can also know, hey, now give out me and Peter. Praise God. Hallelujah. It amazes you what signs of men can desire. And God speaks about them in this portion of scripture. They ask for long life that I may live longer. Yet even the other one is good. Praise God. You simply transition after your purpose is done here. Jesus, the Son of God, went to heaven at 33 years of age. And he had accomplished everything he had to do. So it's not about the number of years you spend on the earth. It's on the accomplishment of the purpose of God upon your life. Praise God. You might live 70 years and you only live to the satisfaction of your flesh and you never live to the satisfaction of the purpose of God for your life. And another man lives for 40 years and they have lived their, 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 their lives in the purpose of God for their lives. The one of 40 is better than the one of 70. There are many people who are looking for long life. Praise the Lord. They even tell them, oh, for you not to grow old, you need to gym. Where that, that man gym died when he was gyming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So don't think because you, you, you joke around and keep your body fit, therefore it gives you long life. No. That doesn't keep you. The Bible says in First Peter, we are kept by the power of God. 
it is okay, it is good and wonderful. I do exercise, everybody should do exercise to have a, a fit body. But it's another, if you put your trust in that, that, that will keep you. How many people have died of accidents and they had no more working hearts and someone in Mulago has spent five years in Mulago with an abnormal heart and they are still alive? Praise God. How many old drunkards do we know in our villages? Yet few medical personnel that have passed on when they are trying to help other people to survive. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading of a report, uh, I was seeing something of doctors that have also died for treating people with COVID-19. And you find an old drunkard in your village who has lived longer. I know one in our village. We saw him when we were still young and up to now. Every time you find him, the guy is drunk. And he has lived longer than many people who are sober. Praise God. I am not saying to say drink so that you live longer. That is also another level of foolishness. Praise the Lord. But I'm trying to show you that the gyming doesn't keep you to live longer. It is God who keeps you to live longer. So there are so many people who go to God and they are asking for a long life. And what is do they ask for? Riches for themselves. Riches for themselves. Not to the benefit of others. Now, if you're born again, you must know that the riches that God has given you is to the profiting of the kingdom of God. The things that the Lord has entrusted with us as stewards, they are to the benefit of other people. Yes, they will benefit you primarily, but they should be to the benefit, secondarily, to the benefit of other people. The life that you live is to the benefit of other people. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man to gain everything and yet lose your soul? Why? Because you never gave your soul to Jesus. Hallelujah. So he says, and you have not asked the life of your enemies. Three things. Long life, riches, and the life of your enemies. Now understand, when Solomon asks for an understanding heart, that preceded many things that he needed. Understand, there is one prayer you can make, and that prayer, when God answers it, it is an answer to so many things that you may not need to take long praying for. At times, we seek what is not important and we forsake what is important. Yet, if we sought what is important, even these other things that we desire will accompany what is important. If you are a preacher, if you are a man of you don't need money. You don't need a house. You need an anointing. When you have an anointing, all these things will come. That changes the way we seek God. Because at times we, we are looking for a form. No, you can't be anointed and fail to get a form. You can't be anointed and fail to get a car. It is a matter of time. You can't profit in the spirit a certain way and fail to attract expendable stuff. They come. They come. They must come. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then these things shall be added unto you. You can't have a certain anointing and your marriage fails to work out. You can't have a certain level of anointing and your business doesn't work out. You can't have a certain knowledge in God and certain things don't come to you. Do not seek for what is to be added. Seek for the major thing. Major on the major and minor on the minors. Praise God. 
So he says, give me an understanding heart that I may judge your people. Understanding places you in a place where you are able to judge matters. The Hebrew word for for the Hebrew word for the word uh, for the word understanding is the word begin. And begin means to to separate, to tell the difference. It means between. That means the ability for you to tell the difference between a thing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin is the ability to tell the difference. So he asked God that give me a heart that can tell the difference. The Bible says, for when you shall separate the precious from the vile, when you, it didn't say if, it means when you mature to a place where you can separate the precious from the vile, then will I make you my mouthpiece. And Paul said that uh, even though it is permissible, it is not beneficial. That, that, that is understanding. You get into a place to know, yes, I have the permission to do this, but it's not beneficial. That is understanding. When you separate the precious from the vile, God says, then will I make you my mouthpiece. It means that God begins to use you at a place where you can tell the difference. This is precious, this is vile, this is permissible, this is beneficial. And you choose what is beneficial from what is permissible. You choose what is precious from what is vile. Yes, I can take four hours watching TV, but it's more important that I get into the Word and read the scriptures. That is a man who was understanding. One who can tell the difference. I have the permission to do this, but it's not beneficial. It doesn't add up to eternity. It doesn't add up to eternity. It is better that I invest in eternity than investing in the things of the world. Because when I invest in the things of the world, like Solomon says, it is all vanity. But a man that has invested in the realm of the spirit will profit. Every time you get to read the scriptures, you're investing. Every time you sit down and speak in other tongues, you are investing. Every time that you meditate on a scripture, you are investing. The Bible says, then your profiting shall appear unto all men. Before you learn to invest your money, have you learned to invest your time in God? Praise God. So Solomon says, give me an understanding heart. That is the same thing in Timothy chapter 2 verses 15 that says, uh, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 3, 15. Timothy 2.15 The Bible says Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the place of understanding where you rightly divide. Not compare scriptures. No. Rightly divide. Are you able to tell the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Are you able to tell the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant? Are you able to tell the difference between the law and the grace? Are you able to separate these matters? Because when you are able, that is understanding. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11. Paul speaks something. First Corinthians 13, 11. The Bible says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away 
childish things. So, listen to this. A person who is a child, in all degree and respect, a child will speak as a child. Praise God. They understand as a child. They think as a child. Three things. They speak, they understand, and they think. Speak, understand, and think. Speak, understand, and think. That's why you can meet somebody who is so old, big, you know, they You look at them and get afraid. And then you begin a conversation like, oh my God, I thought you were here, but you're actually here. Why? Because the moment somebody starts to speak, it shows you how they understand. But also, too, it shows you how they think. So you look at somebody who is big. We, we, we were having a little circus, and we're talking to this person. And when the person started to speak, we say, Oh my God, we wasted all our time explaining. We didn't know, we can't, or she can't understand. Because understanding draws the distinction between immature Christians and mature Christians. According to the level they have experienced the word of God, will they understand? Praise the Lord. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. No wonder when he comes to the Corinthian church, he says, you are babes. They were babes in the spirit. And the way Paul conducted himself among the Corinthian church is not the way he conducted himself when he was in Berea or Macedonia. Or even among those of Philippi. Why? Because this was a church immature in many things. And no wonder he says that to the plain I speak plainly, and to the wise I do. Heart, wisdom. Hallelujah. Meaning, now let's primarily understand. When you are a Christian, you ought to have a certain place of understanding when relating with people. The same understanding that Christ relates with us. All that God relates with us. Praise God. If God deals with that with with you and me graciously, can't you have a basic understanding to deal with people graciously? You want mercy that you don't give. You want to receive grace from God, which grace you do not extend to other people. You want to be forgiven, yet your heart doesn't forgive. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. If you do not forgive another person, do you expect God to forgive you? Because you've already frustrated the pattern. You want to receive grace for your sins, but you, you are not gracious to other people. You, you, God is patient with you, but you don't want to be patient with other people. You want God to extend grace and mercy to you, which grace and mercy you never extend to other people. When we speak about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we often forget that even though it is extended to us, we ought to extend it to other people. That doesn't mean we compromise the word, but it's simply understanding at which place a person is, because you can find a two-year-old, two-year-old, those ones can be a bit reason. You can find a one-year-old who has darkened themselves, and you slap them. Why? Because you don't understand that they are just one year old. And I think you found kids who speak like you, like mature people, like kana kana katuni ngogiranga abantu abakuru. It shocks because you're expected to speak like a child, and you're speaking maturely, so it shocks. 
Because at your age, you ought to speak a certain language. It is understanding that sustains relationships. That's why the Bible says that they were of one language, Genesis 11, and one speech. What was the underlying factor there? Understanding each other. Because when their language is confounded, the Bible says they couldn't understand each other. The reason as to why relationships don't last is because people don't understand each other. They can't speak the same language, but the speech which should give them understanding is different. Somebody says, oh, you bought me shoes. Yes, I bought you shoes because I love you. Oh, I actually thought that you bought me shoes to tell me I have few shoes, there are four. It is mixed up. Praise God. You do something in kind, but the other person interprets it differently. And there is war. Why? Because they don't understand each other. It is even bad if you find it between a parent and a child when they don't understand each other. I said this, but I thought you actually mean this. No, I didn't actually mean that. When I told you how are you, I was actually serious asking you how you are. No, actually when you said how are you, I thought you were insulting me. Oh my God. Understanding. Are you able to tell the difference? So, he says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I gained a certain place of understanding, I put away childish things. That's why it bothers you when you find somebody who is a bit mature and they're acting childishly. But you ought to, to be acting better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You ought to be understanding better. When we were at campus, in our first year, we were introduced to educational psychology. I did education. And in educational psychology, we are introduced to a gentleman called Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud gives the five stages of human development. And of course, there is the oral stage from, from birth to closely about uh, one year. And this oral stage, he says that when children are born, what proves to be, to, 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 to be uh, a, a place of senses is their mouth. That's why little year olds can get anything and put it in the mouth. Yeah? Praise God. And he defines that stage as the oral stage. They want to suck everything. Praise the Lord. Uh, we even seen parents these days who lie them, they put something in their mouth, yet it has nothing. <laughs> Praise God. Because that's the only way they can, they can understand. And he defines the second place and, and, and he calls it the anal stage, where everything they eat goes on. <laughs> Praise God. That's the stage where they are taught a toilet manner, you know, don't poop everywhere. Praise the Lord. They are given potties. And some kids just, for us, we never grow up in rich families. But some kids who grow up from rich families, every morning they go to the party, just see it. Praise the Lord. So, and they need, there was the phallic stage where they, they are attached to their mothers. And, you know, they love their mothers so much. They feel they are competition with their fathers. But there was the latency uh, stage, what, what, which was six years to puberty, where, where they echo starts to revolt. The Kakidi's anger comes up. We are getting informed. Praise the Lord Jesus. Then uh, it defines the last stage of the genital stage where it says this is puberty to death where the sexual uh, urge is, is active and you know they are attracted to the opposite sex. They want to relate. That is the place of more re relational. Amazingly, just to pick out something. Okay, a lot 
it's not in order. But just to pick out something from these stages of development, you realize it defines the stage of puberty to death as a stage of relation. Praise the Lord. As a stage of relation. As a stage of wanting to relate. Praise God. And, and that is what God has called us to. That God has called us to a relationship with Him. If we desire to relate with normal human beings, He has called us to a divinity relationship. To a, a relationship with Him. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. He has called us to the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So if humanly we can understand these stages of evolution and say, okay, this child is at this stage in their lives, this child is at this stage in their life. That's why um, when we're being trained as teachers, they told us many things not to do uh, because we're teaching adolescents as secondary school teachers. And why, why were they teaching us all these things? Is that the age you're dealing with is sensitive. And they were teaching us to have a certain level of understanding when relating with them. Praise God. We needed to understand the stage they are in in their lives and to deal with them better. And one of the things they taught us, let me just speak for you one. When we were being trained as teachers, they taught us something that is so important that I remember. They taught us that if you are a teacher, you ought not to share everything about your life to your students. Why? Because their minds have blood. They carry a certain blood in their minds. Praise the Lord. They have not been introduced to the reality of many things. Hallelujah. So, that in a way placed understanding in our hearts not to share certain things. But you, today you find people, please, if somebody has just got and gone again, they could be mature in the acne understanding, but in many things in the spirit, they are babes. When you are young, you are quick to judge anything that comes your way. When you are mature in God, you are slow. To judge like Jesus says as I hear the Father therefore I judge if I've not had God on an issue if you have not had God on an issue be slow to speak be slow to speak Romans chapter 14 of the same has this to say. The Bible says, welcome with open hands, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. It is just teaching you to relate with those that are babes. It is teaching you to relate with the immature because you have to give them a place to allow them grow also. Because there are people who don't understand immaturity. But you were also immature at one day. At one place in your life, somebody had to put that pamper on your, on your body. You didn't understand. So can you be a bit patient with others as they grow? He says, welcome with open arms. Fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. Meaning you, you are an adult. You are mature. But welcome with open arms. Fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. He says, don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. The Bible says even when it seems they are strong on opinions but weak in the faith department. The Bible says remember they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. That is a man of understanding. And he continues to say, for instance, a person who has been around for a while might well be convinced that he can eat anything on the table while another with a different background might assume all Christians should be vegetarians. Oh, come on, eat your meat. Praise God. And eat accordingly. But since both are guests, the mature and the immature, both are guests at Christ's table, would it be terribly weak if they failed to criticize what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. 
The Bible says in verses 4, do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? Because you can't be patient. There are ministries where even a person who wants to control the whole ministry, the whole ministry and uh, direct things the way they are supposed to be, not even because they even have an administrative role, they are not even given any position in church or they probably have no positions. Praise the Lord. Ministries don't move by your impulse. Ministries move by the, by, 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 by the ministry, by the move of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you do not have any business crossing people off the guest list the moment somebody annoys you. You're out of my books. You write them off. That one will die. They will perish. They are going to fall mad. God loves them too. Praise God. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made, listen, if there are corrections to be made, all manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. God can handle that. He will grow them. He's faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful to grow them. First Corinthians 14 20. The Bible says, in understanding, be men. First Corinthians 14 20. The Bible has this to say. To be, uh, to be perfectly frank, amplified, I am getting exasperated with your infantile thinking. How long before you grow up and use your head, your adult head? It's all right to have a childlike unfamiliarity with evil. A simple no is all that is needed there. But there is far more to saying yes to something. Only mature and well-exercised intelligence can save you from falling into gullibility. The, um, uh, the, 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 the King James of the same, that was the message. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Be not children. Don't act like a child when it comes to understanding. When he says, do not be children in understanding, what does he mean? Don't speak like a child. Don't understand like a child. Don't think like a child. Albeit in months, be children. But in understanding, be men. What defines a man is understanding. And like I've said, your job will be sustained because you have understanding. Your marriage, your relationships, your business will be understand, will be sustained because you have a certain understanding with your clients. Why do people go back to the to, to places where they bought things that are more expensive than where they can buy them cheaper? The other person understands me. Why do people open up to some people and they never open up to others? Because so and so understands me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Praise God. Wisdom is the principal thing. No doubt. But with all thy getting, get understanding. Have a place in you that can tell the difference. Praise God. Have a place in you that can tell the difference. Have a place in you that can tell the difference. Proverbs 14 uh, that I've been mentioning. Verses 33 says, Wisdom rests in the heart of him that has understanding. But that which is in the midst of holes is made known. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And moreover, when Luke is writing his epistle, Luke chapter 1 and verses 1 
when he's writing to the man called Theotilus, he said this. Luke said, for as much as many have taken it and to set forth in order a declaration of, this, of those things which are most surely believed among us. That means many people wrote the gospel. Many people started to write what Jesus did. For as many as have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they declared them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. There is an order that comes, there is an order and a pattern that is established in a man who has a heart of understanding. Praise God. In everything that you do, may you operate, may you function with understanding. Hallelujah. I am sure this teaching has blessed you. If you're there and you're sick, that's where you feel the pain. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you're there and you've never given your life to Christ, say this one after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I am born in Him. Kindly reach to us. There are numbers in the on our, on our social media handles, get to those numbers, call someone will be available and present to help you, to pray with you, to believe God with you, to counsel you, to guide you in any light that you need. In the mighty name of Jesus, from me and Godwin here, we love you and bye.